James doesn't like underlines that are like little shadows in the middle. He likes the shadows all the way along. That's a bit. Actually, it's Eventbrite that captures the details. Keeps all centralised, then likewise they can export the lists to do what they want to do. I mean, don't want to reinvent the wheel if it's not necessary. If it's something that's complex and a plugin does it, just do it with a plugin. You know? That's what I would do if it was my business. So, as promised, I'm going to talk about what it took to become a freelancer and go towards a limited company and talk about the main differences that are involved with that. So, as a freelancer, you have many, many benefits. So, you don't actually fully need to commit to being a freelancer. You can actually have a full time job like I had when I built Loud and Design. So, if this is you, you have an income. So your income affords you to pay your bills and do the things you need to do and freelance is top up money. It's extra money that you don't really need. So the advantage of this means that all your extra time can be spent on building your business. So how you grow the freelance business is by working with others. So what I did is I actually set up a remote team and I used to share some of the cake. So if you imagine your skill set is one big cake, now you can do a lot of things. Lots of people have many different skills. However, there's probably certain parts you're really good at, like I'm usually good at the speak to the clients, client relationships, setting up the deal, managing the team, and the design element. But the programming element, I've came across people that are stronger programmers than me, certainly stronger animators, uh, different things like that. So, for example, if you're taking the programming element, you could say, right, okay, I'll take the programming element away from this. I'll take the project management side away from it, maybe give that to someone else. So you can actually feed, say, three freelancers. So you could have three freelancers working in your team. And if you give them 25% each, so 25, 25, 25, they're all getting something for that, and you're getting your cut, so you're getting 25% for doing it. Now the advantage to this model, versus doing it all yourself and trying to be a superhero, is that you can scale much faster. So at points, we were actually doing 20 and 30 projects at one time which allowed us to white label for seven large agencies here in Scotland. So we were taking their work, it was coming into ourselves, we were designing it, programming it, building it, project managing it, getting the client happy, and then it was being passed on as the agency's work. So this is traditionally how white labeling is done, but the key to doing that well is to actually have a larger team. What I see a lot of freelancers do is you want the full cake, so you want everything all up front, but if you do it like that, you're not going to get the same amount of money because what's actually happening is you're going to run yourself into the ground. It's more important to me that the job is done well. So we're actually quite happy to share that kind of thing. So cut someone else in and then do that. Now the problem comes is when you start to scale. So we got to, I think it was like 16 resources doing this. Okay, so we had 16 of them. And then I asked myself the question of, would it be better to just continually build this freelancing model or would it be better to actually build a team full time because there's only so much time these people can give many of those resources like me had a job in an agency they had a job in a software house they worked internationally so they were in a different country that causes a lot of issues when you scale because clients want things done really really quickly and they want full time resources so that goes so far I mean you could make a really good living doing that you can make a couple of hundred thousand pounds easy just doing that but if you want to scale into a company and build a business, that's not the model I would recommend. And we're going to talk about the differences in models between freelance and agency on this episode. So let's talk about cash flow differences. To run a freelance business, you might think, ah, well, okay, you need to buy your gear, you need to buy your hardware, you need to pay for resources. It is expensive, no one's denying that, but the actual physical running cost to you, the amount of costs in your pocket every month, is relatively low. So just to put it in context, I used to pay £380. So £380 covered my licence fees and the different bits and bobs I needed, like running your tax, having a professional Envision account, all the kind of things you would expect to have as a company. But when you scale that out to actually having full-time employees, this number gets really, really scary, really, really fast. So in a traditional business, you have cash flow. So the way I look at that is, you have a diagram like this. Now on this line, there's what I kind of jokingly call the line of death, right? So it goes along, I've got my red pen. So you have a line that basically has cash flow. You need to hit this number, otherwise your staff don't have a job, you don't have a job, you don't pay mortgages, and things get really ugly really, really fast. 
So let's just hypothetically say the line is here. Now the line's different for every business, it doesn't really matter what the line is, all businesses have it. What I was kind of worried about when I decided to jump out my own was how are we going to hit this line consistently? And I kind of went back into thinking like a freelancer and I went back into thinking uh, like superhero syndrome. Now I'm not saying that to actually slag off freelancers because I was a freelancer myself, but what I was actually thinking in my head was I have to generate six months of this running cost. Like, so say six months is here. I have to generate all that money all by myself to make sure we have a company. And that's actually not how businesses work. You can't save your way into a successful business. So let's just say you had 300,000 pounds in the bank. It doesn't matter because it's going to burn down. Inevitably, the business is either going to have to make money itself or it's not going to have to do it. So when I actually jumped away from my job, I had zero savings, like none, no savings at all. Uh, which you might call really reckless, but the way I was kind of thinking about it is if I can't make this work, then it's never going to work, okay? It has to generate its own income, it has to like, maintain itself, it has to look after itself. So let's talk about how the agencies run their model. In a traditional agency, you work in project to project, okay? I call it gambling, it's spinning a roulette wheel, and you're looking for that win. So if it lands in red, you're great, you're above that line, everybody's happy, good things happen, we get pizzas, everybody's in a happy sort of like mood, okay? So let's just say you had to take four projects in to go above that line. That sounds great, doesn't it? But what happens in the next month? Right, it's really, really bad. And this is what I mean is like if one of those projects didn't come in and you were even 500 pounds shy of the line, your business would die. This was what was kind of really worrying me for so, so long. I had three months notice, okay? Three months that I gave myself to build the business to get myself to a point where I had six months to pay for resources. Because we didn't jump and just have myself, we jumped and we had four resources to pay. With the studio to pay for, the gear, the licenses, all this other stuff that I'm not even going to go into. <laughs> Legal fees and setups and VAT registration, there's a lot of stuff to register with a business. But I don't like this model because it really does depend on projects falling at the same time. Now, if you make your projects super cheap, then you'll get a lot of projects, but then that also means you need a lot of resource to render those back. So our business model is a little bit different, and we don't actually attack this model at all. I'm not looking for projects, I'm looking for sustainable relationships with our clients. So we actually work a completely different model to this, uh, which I'll talk about just now. Okay, so got rid of the projects. Now let's talk about how Loud and Design do business. I wasn't really interested in having one month sustained, or even two months or three months sustained. Now that is completely normal, most businesses run around about two or three months cash flow. If they're very, very wealthy, they can run it more than that, but that's generally what happens. So even some of the biggest agencies, they cost quarter of a million pounds per month just to actually pay for the lights to be on. So that's the staff, the lights, the gear. It's very, very expensive. So what I was kind of seeing is, really what we want is this to be sustainable long time. Okay? It's more like farming and agriculture than it is like a quick win. Right? We're not looking to dip in the market and dip out. We're looking to have a long lasting relationship with our clients. So actually what we started doing was focusing on support. Okay, So I was actually saying like, we could do a website, we can do all this kind of stuff and that is what we do. We're a web agency so we do projects. We still take projects on. However, my primary focus for those last two months of my notice period was talking to people about ongoing support. Now the advantage of ongoing support is, let's say for example you can get someone to take six months of ongoing support, or like a year of ongoing support, okay? So you actually get little pieces all the way along, okay, we'll just do six. And six should be over here then. Okay, so we've got six months of ongoings, and you're like, well we're not hitting the survival line, okay? But you've obviously still got those projects, okay? So we're still running on the agency model for the short term but these ongoings are now coming up. So as you go, you're going to get more ongoings. Now every time you land a contract like that, this line gets less. So we need less projects, okay? So if this line represents 20,000 pounds, okay, we need 20,000 pounds worth of projects, but we get to a point where we have 10,000 in ongoings, we only need to get 10,000 pounds worth of projects. So this is the model that took us to actually achieving eight months billing. So we had eight months billing inside the first three weeks of becoming an agency. And my target and my goal, and I will hit it because that's what I want to do with the company. To me that equals safety. 
is to take this to two years billing inside the first four months. And I can assure you that will happen because we're already trending for that to happen. As I say, we started this with a zero base. Every single penny I had in the bank built up from freelance, which was a sizable sum, but basically all that went on gear, okay? All the hardware we had to buy, the insurances, the stuff like that, all that money went on hardware. And then I was looking at it and I thought, we have literally nothing to start this with. And already we've like accelerated. So we're well north of the line on month one. So we're three weeks into month one. And then on the ongoings, we're actually now, we're good actually for two years for some contracts that are running. But we've already hit eight months billing, which I think is fantastic. I can see it's getting to the first year probably by the middle of next month. And then we'll move on to get to year two. Okay, that's a completely different model and focus. Other agencies do actually sell support, but they don't make it what their primary business is. The way I look at it is if a customer takes support, I can actually grow their business. So let's say you give me five hours. For five hours, I can do things like email campaigns or social media. I can help you with marketing, do a banner. We can upgrade your website. You know, we can do like an e-commerce design. We can integrate a plugin. There's lots of different things we can do with those time segments, but what's happening there is there's little sporadic investments going back into the business to help that business grow. So while we are doing this, for us, this is sustainability. So that's a win for us. But for the clients, what's actually happening is their profits are going like that because we are actually targeting and finding out where they make their money and where we can make them more money. So that's why I always say we're a conversion-led agency. It's not about showy graphics or design. It's actually about getting the client a win. At the end of the day, it's a return on investment. So our model suits the client, it suits us, and we're kind of avoiding this kind of project roulette, which I've always looked for the outside of the circle at agencies, and I don't get why they do that. Like that model to me is broken, because you're effectively gambling. So if you're in favor in the market, the market love you, they want to give you lots of projects, you could do that all day, every day. But what I've observed is even the biggest agencies, and some that might probably surprise you, they always go lean, because there's always dead months. Christmas is a bad month, the summer's a bad month, and that just happens, okay? Happens to all companies. So that's our model, and that's how we basically built to where we got to just now. That's another great week in the studio, so send the episode three, and I'll see you again next week.